Hello, my name is Andrew Thake from Minds and Money. Delighted to be joined today by John Bay, Chairman and Chief Executive Officer for Standard Uranium. Great to have you with us, John. Great to be here, Andrew, and uh, thanks for taking the time to uh, hear a little bit more about uh, Standard Uranium. Um, I think an opening question is that, uh, which many investors ask me, is why uranium now? Uh, I get that asked all the time as well. So, look, if we look at uh, the global picture to start off with, everybody is wanting to move towards electrification and the green energy future. And nuclear energy, which is run by uranium, is clean energy. It's carbon free. And if we want to get to that carbon free future, nuclear has to be part of the equation. And there's a number of uranium mining companies out there, but what does standard uranium offer that maybe other mining companies in your space don't? Uh, good question. So for us, we are on the very front end of the nuclear fuel cycle. So we are pure exploration. So when you look at uh, you know uranium companies, you have those who are actually producing, the producing mines, you have the developers, and you have the exploration companies. So for us, we are the exploration. Now exploration is high risk, high reward. It's not for every investor, but for those investors who want to have a, a balanced portfolio with some really great upside, an exploration is the kind of company you want to add to your portfolio. Now, why Standard? Well, Standard has you know five projects in the Athabasca Basin. We've got a proven team that has made exploration discoveries in this region. We've got our flagship Davidson River project, which is a, you know, a world-class project right beside um, Fission Uranium's RRR and Next Gen Energy's an aero project, which is the next uranium mine in the world that's going to be turned into a mine and a mill. So those are a few kilometers away from us. So for us and for our investors, making a high-grade uranium exploration discovery on our project has a great path to a future win for our investors. So if investors come on board, what are the key milestones they can expect from Standard Uranium over the next, say, six to 12 months? Uh, so we started this company about five years ago, took it public in 2020, and we've been doing our exploration work uh, on five of our projects. This year, going into 2023, will be our greatest year yet for exploration. So we have four of our projects which are going to be drilled. So starting in February, we're going to start drilling our Sundog project, which is in the north near Uranium City. That's going to be in February, March, April. And then we're going to move down to the eastern side of the basin where we're going to be drilling probably a Santa Atlantic and Canary, two of those three. And then for the summer, we're going to be drilling our flagship, Davidson River, which is going to be right from middle of June all the way through to September. So it could be nine to 10 months of straight drilling. And all that drilling means every drill hole is a possibility of a great success, a great um, you know, discovery. So for our shareholders, lots of news, lots of drilling. It's going to be a remarkable year for those who want to follow along with Standard Uranium. Um, you talked earlier about having an experienced team. Can you tell us firstly a little bit about yourself? Sure. So myself, I've been in the uh, exploration side of the business for over 15 plus years. I started back in around 2005, worked in the diamond space. I worked in gold, worked in copper, some uranium, got involved in oil and gas for about seven years, and then came back to start standard uranium back in 2017. So I'm a capital markets person. I run uh, the business side of things, the capital markets, and I hire the team, the geologists who do the, the work in the field. And now, your team, uh, management yeah. team? Yeah, sure. So my VP of exploration is Sean Hilliker. Uh, he's got five geologists working for him. All of them are very specific uranium exploration geologists. Sean uh, cut his teeth working with Next Gen Energy. Actually, he came right out of university and went and worked with Next Gen on their aero deposit. Uh, he actually did his master's degree, wrote the paper and a lot of their feasibility study on the aero deposit. So if anyone's going to know the rocks in this region of the world, it's Sean. So having him lead our team is uh, remarkable. Mm -hmm. Um. One thing that's, that some investors will go and say to me is I would go and tell them that, in my opinion, uranium is green, but they'll mm -hmm. go, what about Fukushima? You know, what about Chernobyl? Or even ah. if they're even older than that, they'll go, what about Three Mile Island? Um, can you just talk to us a little bit about how nuclear has gone and changed over the last few years, um, you know, about the sort of like module four reactors and how that's really kind of changed in the way that the nuclear energy does business? Okay, well, there's a lot in that question there, but let me start by saying, look, yes, uh, Three Mile Island, Fukushima, Chernobyl, those are three accidents the nuclear has, uh, has had over the past you know, 40, 50 years. Uh, 
yes, they were they were big accidents, and yes, there was a bit of damage. But realistically, compared to any other energy source, nuclear's uh, record for safety is remarkable. It's not, voted the number one cleanest, safest energy form there is. So, look, there were there were a few accidents, but overall, you know, if you look at compared to any other energy source, uh, nuclear has been remarkable. Now, it's been um, you know it's been beat up pretty good over the last 20, 30 years as to not being safe, but if you believe the science and you trust the reports coming out now, people are really looking forward to new nuclear. And we're talking about, you know, some of those accidents were on reactors that were built in the 50s and 60s and 70s. The reactors that are being built now are remarkably safe. And that's not even talking about the small modular new nuclear. The stuff that's been putting out for the last 10, 20 years is, is incredible. I mean, even some of these reactors that were built in the 70s and 80s are getting relicensed for another 20, 30, 40 years. So that says a lot. And the nuclear regulatory industry is, is very intense. So to get those approvals takes a lot. Mm -hmm. um, who are your key investors at the moment? Uh, well, we've got about 10 key institutional investors, you know, for a company of our size, which is 20 million Canadian market cap. That says a lot. Uh, we just have a Sprott Asset Management came in on our last financing and pulled about 10% of, of Standard Uranium right now. So, um, you know, we have the, the originals, you know, the Station Coves and the L2 Capitals and Tribeca's who've been shareholders for several years. But now we've got a number of other Canadian institutional funds who've played along and joined us in the last year, which has really been a nice switchover from being strongly retail focused investor base to now a really good mix of institutional funds plus retail. Mm -hmm. um, what are your ESG credentials? I mean, how do you work, for example, with communities on the ground there? Well, that's a good question. So where we work in Canada in the Athabasca Basin. A few things you have to have going for you. Number one, you have to have all your permits with the government. And to get those permits, your ESG credentials have to be spotless. You have to, uh, you know, lay out your plan and then follow those and, and prove what you're doing actually happens. Number two, you have to work with the First Nations communities. Uh, if you want to work in this region, you cannot, you know, begin programs unless you have First Nation agreements in place and consultations taking place. We've been doing that for five plus years and we've got incredible relationships with our First Nations partners. And I encourage our listeners to wait a few more weeks and watch for the next uh, ceremony coming up between Standard and one of our First Nations partners talking about the next steps and where we're going with that. So listen, you have to have a great record. You have to have good First Nations consultations and you have to be uh, working with all the vendors and all the First Nations people in the region. And we do a remarkable job of doing that. And what's your vision for the business? Where would you like to see Standard Uranium in say five years, 10 years down the line? Uh, okay, so what we're trying to do right now is make that next big high-grade uranium discovery. Uh, with that, if we make that on our Davidson River project, that sits right beside which will be a mine in a mill, next-gen energy, in the next three to four years. So for us, the, the goal is make a high-grade discovery on Davidson River, and then we will be a great exit takeoff strategy for, for you know that project to be taken out by somebody to put that ore into that mill right beside us. So that would be a great uh, project for, for standard shareholders to be excited about. And on top of that, we have our other projects, which are also early-stage exploration. We'd love to see discoveries happen there and advance those over the next few years and see how big if we can make a resource on those projects too. Well, we think that at Minds and Money, you've got an absolutely fantastic project, a really great team. We're really looking forward to seeing you at Minds and Money London, and we do wish you all the best. That was John Bay, Chairman and Chief Executive Officer from Standard Uranium. Thank you, Andrew. We look forward to seeing you in London in the next week.